At Brokilon, Geralt is being stubborn as ever. Intent on finding Ciri, he refuses to sit still and let himself heal. Jaskier informs Milva that he'll help Geralt no matter what. Elsewhere, the sorceresses of Aretuza visit the Scarlet Ammonite Mines and find the dead girls that were part of Vilgefortz's experiments. They stand together to reverse the damage to give the poor girls a proper burial. Yennefer is intent on getting Ciri back. She tells them they must work together to bury the girls, and then they will fight. Fringilla and Francesca arrive in Nilfgaard. They want to rule over Sintra side by side to keep things in line until Ciri comes. In the meantime, Fringilla suggests Emmer belongs in Nilfgaard. But the catch is that Francesca can only rule over the older elves in Sintra, not the capable Scoia'tael fighters, who Emmer demands to stay in Nilfgaard as part of his army. Francesca would have to disavow them to take up her position in Sintra. In the aftermath of Thaned, King Vizimir is pissed at Djigstra. He's also concerned they haven't found Radovid yet. Vizimir intends to blame everything on Philippa and execute her. However, Vizimir and DJ Straw don't realize that Philippa's handmade call was eavesdropping on their conversation. Geralt is intent on leaving Brokilon to go after Ciri. But he and Jaskier aren't really the best fighting duo right now. So Milva, a capable archer, decides to travel with them. She gives Geralt the crest that Triss left for him which formerly belonged to Renfri. This crest represents Geralt's neutral stance. At Aretuza, Yennefer gives Tissaia a much-needed pep talk regarding Vilgefortz, and not letting him make her doubt herself. During the burial of the girls, Tissaia writes a final letter to Yennefer and then commits suicide. Tissaia blames herself for everything that happened and believes ending her life is the best thing to do. Yennefer finds Tissaia's body. After that, a devastated Yennefer visits Geralt in Brokilon. She heals him with her magic, and they agree that she needs to stay with the sorceresses, for now, to make the world a safer place for Ciri. Geralt pledges to hunt down Vilgefortz and Emmer. Back in Redania, Radovid convinces Vizimir to let him go. Radovid wants to be with Jaskier to help him, since he doesn't feel he is needed there. He's not a spymaster, and feels he's not a good prince. Philippa arrives to tell Vizimir that the coup was not a failure because they exposed Vilgefortz as a Nilfgaardian traitor, and she has a plan to get them back on top. But Vizimir is still angry because the goal was to put the Brotherhood in his pocket. Now there is no Brotherhood. It turns out that Philippa's trust in Digikstra was not misplaced. He tries to convince her to kill him to make amends with Vizimir by placing the blame on him. Philippa assures him she's already set a new plan to protect them both into action. Philippa's loyal handmaid call slits Vizimir's throat. After losing so much, Francesca is ready to accept Emir's deal and give up on Dol Blathana. She's willing to sacrifice the Scoia'tael to Emir's army if it saves everyone else. Fringilla is vehemently against this. She tries to convince Francesca not to trust the Emperor by revealing he killed her baby and then tried to set Fringilla up for it. By revealing this, Fringilla also reveals that her lie ended up getting so many of Francesca's loved ones killed. Francesca vows to make Emmy and Fringilla suffer. Unfortunately for Radovid, Vizimir's death means he's now the king so his plans of joining Jaskier are over. Philippa's new plan allows her and DJ Extra to take control by guiding their new king and determining Radania's new direction. At Aretuza, Yennefer draws the remaining mages together, and we see the beginnings of the Lodge of Sorceresses forming. Dara shows up in Brokilon to speak with Jaskier. He tells Geralt that he knows Ciri and that if they see her again, they should tell her he forgives her, and is sorry. Afterward, Geralt and Jaskier gather materials to make new Witcher elixirs. Then Geralt does some training to ensure he's back up to snuff. In Nilfgaard, Emmy prepares to greet Princess Cirilla, but it's the fake Ciri, Terran. Emery publicly presents the fake Ciri to the court to announce her return to Sintra. 
The guys who captured Ciri were just some run-of-the-mill bounty hunters from Nilfgaard. They tie her up and keep her at a tavern where she meets one of the rats, Kaylee, who helps her to escape. The other rats, including Missal, arrive soon after and overpower the bounty hunters. Missal hands Ciri a sword and tells her to fight the lead bounty hunter to see how she fares in regular combat against a human. Ciri kills him pretty effortlessly. It's the first time she's taken a human life. Geralt starts a fight with some Nilfgaardians when he sees them forcing a young girl and her family into some caravans. It goes along with another dear friend letter narration from Yennefer, where she says, neutrality be damned. Yennefer says she knows Geralt will find Ciri while she will ensure the world is safe for her to return to. Geralt leaves the lead soldier at the scene alive to send a message to Emir that Geralt is coming and will save Ciri no matter what. In the final frame of Henry Cavill's Geralt, he leaves behind Renfri's crest, a symbolic gesture that Geralt finally accepting he can no longer stay neutral. The final scene shows Ciri with the rats after killing the bounty hunter. Ciri tells Missal that her name is Falca. Thanks for watching. To catch all the latest from us, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as a new video drops. We'll see you in the next one.